Hello everyone and welcome to my VAS guide video. This video is going to be split into two parts. One of them is going to be the build itself and the other one is going to be me going over some gameplay footage. I'm going to start off with the build. So the gear we're wearing is very basic. We're using five jewels, two F gold and five Valorant. I'm personally using two Swift trains. You could be using three. And then I'm using a crush enchant front bar and a shock enchant back bar. The crush is to proc on spheres to increase DPS. And I'm using as well the tristat enchants. This is to pump the HP up. I want to lay around 20k HP. And this is to survive the potential boss jump that I might get in my face. Doing a thumbs jump or so on. Basically, in this healer role, your primary focus is on mechanics and not so much the healing itself, so your overall magic pull does not matter too much. I'm trying to keep a vampire stage 2 as much as possible, and I'm using Clockwork Citrus with this and the Atrion Fountains. Bar wise, on the front bar, I'm using Breath of Life, Mutagen, Orbs, Perch, and Illustrious Healing. The reason I'm using Illustrious Healing is, in my opinion, that it's the smoothest way to proc all of them reliable and it's the easiest one to aim. All of them is one of your most important jobs in this room. And you basically want to proc it exactly where you aim at. And I feel that Charts doesn't have the same aiming capil abilities, plus they're slow. Perch on the front bar is mostly because you'll be sitting on the front bar for the most of the fight, so you want the magic aid passive as much as possible. Back bar wise, I'm using Elemental Drain. This one has been a very basic skill. I'm I, my job is to keep this up on the spheres and the mini bosses. I'll go into how you proc this the best afterwards. Dampen Magic. This is a, again a survivability tool. You will get stacking mechanics uh, in this trial and this is the most powerful shield that you have access to. And you want to proc this whenever you're afraid of getting a boss jump on you or getting the enraged gun. Channel acceleration, this is a new skill from the Psychic Tree. This is a tool I use to get fast into the group. I'm going to go much more into detail on how to cast this in the uh, video afterwards. Luminous Shards, this again is to proc all of potentially, but also a sustained tool for tanks and then power of the light. Apart from Horn, this is your most efficient way of providing DPS to the group. This applies minor fracture and minor breach to whatever you cast it on. You're not going to be casting this on the main boss since the front kiter will be keeping a very high uptime on the main boss. But instead, you'll be throwing it on spheres and mini bosses. You want to cast this every time you cast rain. I'm going to go into why now. It's because of the illuminate passive. This is a, a very important boss to your group. And since the front kind is too far away from the DDs, you'll need to cast a skill from this tree, which turns out in this case to be part of the light. Plus you'll be progging the prison passive, which will be providing you with alt, which will make you able to cast more wands. So this is basically the reasoning behind the build. It's very simple. If you feel like there's something that should be changed, then it's very personalized. The most important thing is that you've got Elder Drain, Power of the Light, and you've got some form of Perch and Healing, and of course Warhorn. Okay, so this is gonna be the second part of the video, where I go through some gameplay. So gonna start here at the beginning of the trial and um, this is the re probably the easiest part all you have to do at the start is proc alone in the middle of the group and try and stay as far away as possible to not steal major slayer like I just did here see me getting the blue ends this is mostly accidental due to the fact that I was the first guy in so here in the beginning you just want to throw ops and all around the group now we come to the important part in 2%. Now, when the bus jumps, one group is going to go to the exit and one group is going to stay here in the entrance. 
Now it's really important that you decide which healer goes where. You see Tabata over here, ready to heal the exit group, and I'm going to be healing the entrance group. Now it also matters in terms of Alurim. You saw me casting Alurim here as they were running in. This is a pretty bad spot, but just happened to be like that. Now I know that this group has received Alurim, so that means that as soon as they're jumping is over, the first thing I do is that I go to the exit group and I proc Alurim on them. Now my kiting position is here in the middle. This is where the this is the usual spot for the uh, group healer, and that makes it really easy to spot spears. Now I was talking about how important it was to debuff spears, and you see me casting Power of the Light. This means this entire group right here is going to receive the Illuminate spell damage, which is really important for the uh, for the group DPS. Again, this all room could have been on the right side. But since so many people were stacked here to kill this year, this is the best spot. Now, Lofis spawns. I want to debuff him. He spawned here, but I want to debuff him after he's traveled. And I want to make sure that he's debuffed before he walks in, because then he's going to be in the Alms hitbox. In this trial, Alms hitbox is something you really have to work around. and. One usual mistake that healers make as a group healer is that they will try and walk to either side and back and forth to try and hit these Eladrains and Power of the Lights on the mini bosses. And it's really a mistake because you have such a short time to walk in. So instead, you want to know when the bosses spawn, like they teleport, or when they spawn, and you want to debuff them when they're in positions where they're easy to debuff, like here when Lothus is walking in. So you see me throwing Drain, Power of the Light. And then I start throwing mobs again. Now I throw this on a rim on the right side because he was on the left before, and I was not really sure how if every single DD was on this here. And you generally just want to go right, left, right, left. Now Worms is gonna sp jump in two percent, so I'm getting ready, throwing the other rim on the exit group because I know I'm gonna be walking to the right entrance group in a second. I'm gonna be healing them. And the first two jumps, you can always go on either exit or entrance. You see me debuffing Lofus here before the jump. Now, when he's stacked exactly on the tail, this is one of those spots where you can always debuff him. It's good to remember. Here we go. Just threw the other rim on the exit group. I'm going to throw them into the exit group. That's why we keep the up times high. Remember, it's a 40 second buff, so even if you fuck up once, it's not gonna cost too much as long as you fix it immediately. Now, just waiting for films to spawn, and he's gonna spawn now 70%. Now, this is a very important add-on. Um, it's called Asylum Status Panel, and it tracks the mini-bosses. Now, film is just spawned in here. That's the guy here, the Night Bay boss. You see his timer right here. This is the Enraged timer. And usually, it's mainly the Raid Leader who looks at this and decides when to focus the boss. But it's in very important for the first jump. When this reaches 10 seconds, he's going to do his first jump. So I want to be in the pack in 10 seconds. Now, two seconds before, I was a bit quick here because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss it. But two seconds before, you always want to be starting to walk back. So, there is a vent on either side right here. These are the vents you want to aim for for the first jump. You do not want to be entirely in the corner. If I walk in this corner right here, chances are he's either going to jump in the group or he's going to jump on to puncher because he doesn't have the an eternal rearrange and that's what we're going to take advantage of in a second so i want to be a bit in the front on these vents if possible there we go 10 seconds films is on me now what i do is i walk into the corner that's not hit by the aoe i 
purge myself of the debuff first because he does leave a bleed on you. You can purge this or you can use a ritual. And I start casting my channel acceleration because you know he's gonna jump bunter bunter for the front kiter and she's the front kiter in this case. And if I walk forward right now as he's right here, he's just gonna jump on me a third time. So what I wanna do is stay out of his vision range. Oops till this timer comes up. This is going to start at 19. And as soon as you see this timer coming up, it's safe to just go ahead into the group. Now, I'm going to proc alert. First thing, I'm just going to start throwing orbs. Orbs have a 20 second cooldown. Films has a 20 second cooldown. There are eight DDs. It takes one second to throw one orb. So about half the time in your group, you have to be throwing ops and you have to be throwing them in different directions so that every DD gets a chance. You see me throwing a lot on the right group here. It's because I know it's about this helping this group a little bit, so I have to be a bit biased to this group. Now, again, always prioritize the deep of the spheres. Now I walk back a bit here so that I don't kite on the DDs. It's not because I'm walking back too early. Now I could stay an extra second because I'm pretty far back, but it's on two seconds before I walk back. And I aim for the vents again. Now he's a bit slow this time, but I still get to get into the corner. Casting channel acceleration. Now, if you are mid cast on channel accelerations, you can easily sprint out of these AOEs. Don't try and block it or cancel it to can't like to block the area you can just walk right out of it because you're so fast now i don't want to push it and start walking towards the group because he's not reset yet now he's reset so now it's safe again I walk back a bit early here because the boss is at 51%, so I don't want to take any chances. Uh, I'm I'm going to take the films jump in here mainly because I I actually want to go out and deep off the sphere afterwards. So that's what I'm doing. You see me? I want to stay safe. The f the boss first jump is going to be right here, so I need to be in this corner to not get smashed. If I walked all the way back, I couldn't drain the sphere maybe. So I'm staying in this corner to get the sphere deep off stuff. I get the films jump here, which is totally fine. He can like it's not gonna land on any DDs and it's not gonna mess up the next jump. And I can still walk into this corner. And walk in now. See me helping a bit extra with the debuffs. Now the first kite after jump can be a bit messy so you have all this room back here, why not use it? Now, this is not the best all room cycle because it's in AoE, but you shouldn't be too afraid because it does last quite a long time. So, if the DD gets a nasty cone like this, you kind of want to help them heal because they cannot move at all, which means they might take damage from, you know, uh, the phones. You see him casting the bolts, so it might just land here and go right through them. And if he just moves just a little bit, these guys are gonna get hit, so he has to stand really still. Now luckily he throws it here instead. Now Films is going to be in Rage, oh lo sorry, Lofi is going to be in Rage, so once he is close to being in Rage and if he's in Rage, um, try and help the DDs as much as they're in an Rage Poison Cone. We're going to nuke him before he does it this time though. Again, two seconds, I'm going to walk back. Now 
If he's slow like this, it's usually because he's out of position. Now oh, that was a really bad aura in proc. Um, should have been either here or here. I could deep off films, he's in the right position for it. Um, and you see me trying to do it there. Now Thelms is going to be in right soon, so the group is going to focus him. I'll make sure to keep off the debuffs, and this time I'm not going to walk back. If it's sketchy whether or not he's going to jump, he of course always walks back, but I'm pretty sure we're going to make it here. This is now going to be the easiest time of the trial, and this is where DPS is going to be pushed into execute. So once you get Thelms down, you just want to be a, a heal bot and you want to get as many orbs off as possible and push the deeps. You see me purging after the big cones because, like, the night blades are mostly healing themselves, but the poison cone does leave a very nasty healing debuff on you and you, you really want it purged, so it's a choice whenever or not you trust the healing without it. Like, I know we're soon gonna go into the jump phase and I and I want the DD to have as much healing as possible so that's why I choose to patch. Now on the 25% jump if Thumbs is up you are gonna be in the back taking the jumps while or if he's gonna do the jump the Thumbs jump doing the Olms jump you're gonna be in the back, but because there's 23 seconds left, I can actually stay in the entrance and heal the DDs while they're DDing the boss. This leaves some room for the Night Blades to throw executes, because the executes doesn't hit like the Impale doesn't heal them, but because I'm healing them, they can afford to Impale, and this is a good DPS game. Now, the off tank doesn't have the most fun time doing the execute because he's going to be holding two bosses where we're not going to kill. So, I want to throw a few shots on him. Let's see how many I'll remember to throw. You see the timer turning blue? That means that in three seconds, Films is going to come up. Now, if Films is dead in down here by me, let's say he jumped on me once and then got killed by the DDs. It's a really good idea if I say to the front kiters that they know they're gonna get the first jump. Luckily Films died right on the tail, which is perfect for me to go back and take the first jump. If you're taking the film stream doing the fire and you're all the way back in the corner, the fire is almost gonna do no damage, so you shouldn't worry too much. But doing the execute you always want to shield before the films jump. Because if you're standing out here, you're gonna take a good amount of damage. So it's very important to keep yourself alive. If you die, the team is gonna have a really hard time surviving. As one guy dies. One other thing about the execute is that the DDs are pretty much gonna be spamming a lot of Impale, so you really want to keep the the healing up. Like there's gonna be a lot less healing, and it's not such a big problem for the night blades themselves. But the sorcerer, he's got no self healing, and he's just relying on the DDs beside him to heal him. But if they're spamming impale, he's not gonna not gonna have an easy time. So you want to keep an extra eye out for healing. It is the hardest part of the trial in this case for you. No, the off tank is by the Kyra, so I expect him to get shots from the Kyra. Now, this comb 
if the cone if felt if law face is here and the cone is towards the group it's really really nasty and really hard to survive so luckily i'm the one getting it walking back for the thumbs jump and it's totally valid to move it here now if you were standing if i was standing over like here and started turning it i'd be hitting a lot of dds on the way back so i'd rather take it towards the exit but if you have overlapping mechanics like this now i'm getting the cone i'm getting fire and i'm gonna receive a thumbs jump in a second this is why we have the shield on our bar and we have a bit of extra bit of extra health because if i didn't have that here i would be pretty much dead like i could survive without the health maybe which we're gonna see in a second why but i would not be surviving without the shield that's for sure no i actually missed the <laughs> missed the purge i was purging here to get the uh, healing debuff off me but i do it just a second too early but because films is not stacked correctly he's gonna jump on me just after the other mechanics which is really nice so i wasn't really in danger Now, again, Night Blades are spamming execute, so you just want to keep the healing up. And this is going to be one of the last fears and one of the last Thumbs jumps. Again, you can just run out of these areas. There we go. 114k score. About a seven minute entire run. 645 fight. If we didn't have two dead DDs, this would have been a world record, but fortunately we had. So I hope this video was useful, and if you didn't find it useful at all, I hope you just enjoyed it, and um, thanks for watching.